dear students, maybe parents, our colleagues from Ukraine, uh, UK, Kenya and uh, Ethiopia, Uganda, our partners, Cognita uh, Consultancy representatives, you are welcome to our Ukraine uh, Educational Affair uh, program webinar. Today, uh, we would like, uh, we'll try to give you the information about the, especially the medicine, dentistry, pharmacy education in Ukraine by uh, giving chance to our Ukraine Cognita Consultancy representative, Ms. Regenia. And then we will have two students. One of them uh, has already studied and finished medicine in Ukraine. And uh, he is currently a doctor in Tanzania. The other one is uh, from Kenya, a student studying uh, in Ukraine in the fourth year medicine. So we will welcome them. Uh, and we are going to listen them, their experiences to study in Ukraine. So I hope in this attempt or endeavor to give you the information about the different cities, different countries of the world for the further educational opportunities, depending on your uh, budget, depending on your uh, educational backgrounds actually. So we are trying to help you to broaden your uh, horizon for the study opportunities in the world. So today, I would like to start with the, uh, what the Cognita Consultancy is. I would like to give a brief information about the Cognita Consultancy. So, so then we will proceed with the Miss uh, Genia. Mr. Mahmoud, can you allow me to take the screen share? Thank you. Um, as a Cognita Consultancy, the, what kind of services which we are providing to our students, not only in uh, East Africa, but also uh, UK and Ukraine, in the six different branches, we try to provide the information to the students. Uh, is my screen visible with the others? Yeah, I think there is a- uh, Yes, just not two second. Thank you very much. So I would like to talk about the, what the Cognita Consultancy Services are. The first of all, we'd like to give the application guidance admissions to the secondary school education, uh, such as Canada. Uh, we have a very good partner in Canada for those students who would like to study uh, high school in Canada, we give such kind of services to them. And uh, also the bachelor degree foundation, master degrees and the PhD degrees for their applications, admission processes, uh, we do give the consultation to those uh, students who would like to study abroad. And on top of that, for exam preparation, as you know that studying abroad and getting an admission from the universities depends on the, some kind of national or international exam results. Uh, very common ones, which uh, SAT, ACT, or in terms of medicine, IMAT examination is necessary for the studying medicine. In uh, Italy. So, in these exam preparations, we give the guidance and also we prepare the courses for the students who would like to sit for those examinations. For their exam readiness, we do provide also those exam preparation courses. On top of that, uh, for again, the for the, those students who would like to study abroad and with the scholarship. We give them the information about the scholarships, which the universities or other private institutions they are providing as soon as we get the information. On top of that, for a scholarship uh, candidate, what do they have or what they must have in terms of academic excellence? There are some other uh, factors also affecting that one. We go give the consultation to those uh, students 
to get ready before the time while they are studying in the maybe first year in the uh, A level or the high school or from uh, last year of the secondary school in Cambridge system year 11 and onward. So we give them the information for the uh, university application readiness and uh, about the admissions, what kind of documents they will need and uh, what the tuitions uh, will be for the universities they would like to apply and also accommodation. As today you are going to listen to our uh, students from Ukraine, they will give us about the tuition fees, accommodation fees, life, life expenses over there. So such kind of information before going there to get the clear information about those issues will help you to arrange your budget as well. On the other hand, we are the authorized uh, MAP carrier test distributor in the East Africa. So MAP test is an international recognized test, which is helping the students to find their strengths, their qualifications, their capabilities, skills. Most of the time, the students, they are not that much aware of those skills and those uh, abilities, talents. So while they are choosing the profession, the profession or the what they wanna do in the future should be compatible with the, their talents and their characteristics. So the, we help the students to choose the correct subjects in the A-level or for the university courses, which program which they will be most likely will be happier rather than choosing a course or program which they will, it's not suitable with their uh, character, with their uh, nature. So we help the students by using that professional map test to guide their future. International Olympiads or competitions like Olympia uh, or some other uh, mathematics Olympiads, the science Olympiads, we guide the students about this issue as well. And uh, online services, admission to the online or open uh, secondary school programs, AP courses, bachelor degrees, the master degrees. We also provide the services about those issues. And about Cognita, we have direct agreements with the, some universities uh, in many different countries, starting from USA, UK, Australia, Canada, and also we have some kind of partner agencies in those countries. Also, we can uh, help the students to get a good guidance about the admission processes, visa procedures, and even uh, when they reach over there, if we have a partner organization over there, they will be ready to welcome them. And even we can provide the uh, airport pickup services. And uh, as I have mentioned before, Cognita is a group of consultancy agencies. Our headquarters is located in UK, London, and we have uh, four branches in East Africa, Uganda, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Kenya. And we have also one branch in Ukraine. Those are our contact numbers. Please do not hesitate to contact with us in case of any further inquiries about the admissions, uh, exam readiness, exam preparation courses. I think this is uh, the end of my short presentation. Now, I would like to welcome Ms. Uh, Genia about the life in Ukraine, the what kind of country is Ukraine and education system in Ukraine. So to give us the further information about the studies in Ukraine. Ms. Genia, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, again, I have prepared a small presentation for you to see what is this, what a kind of a country it is, and um, just to get some general information. Okay, I'm gonna start sharing it with you now. Okay, so first of all, I would like you to make sure that you do not confuse the 
sharing with any different countries of the post-Soviet environment, such as, for example, Poland, which were the numerous questions about regarding um, uh, whether what is the currency and so on. Yes, so Poland is, yes, we do border with Poland. It is located in Europe. We are one of the biggest countries in the Europe. And currently uh, the population is approximately 48 000, a million people. Uh, the currency in Ukraine is uh, Grivna, which is equal approximately to three cents of the United States dollars. So if you want to have like $10, that would be approximately 260 Grivnas. Uh, so Ukraine's capital is um, Kiev, and I'm going to talk about different country, uh, cities in our country because uh, different cities in our country have medical universities, those which you are particularly interested in. Uh, so uh, Ukraine is a beautiful country, actually. Um, the biggest city is here. You can see the capital. It's uh, Kiev. If uh, I point it, I hope that you could see it. Um, our head office is located in Odessa, which is one of the a marvelous city located on the coast of the Black Sea, a very touristic area. A lot of tourists come to Odessa, especially during this period. It's high season right now. Uh, the, you, the Ukraine is going to fascinate you with uh, numerous picturesque views that you are going to uh, see in our country. For example, rivers, uh, snowy mountains, the mountains are located on the west side, these are the Carpathians, and you could go skiing there, snowboarding, um, actually wonderful forests uh, to enjoy and simply to relax. Uh, there are also some kind of sanatoriums, the ones that offer uh, people treatment from different diseases, which is kind of very popular uh, location. Uh, for example, people who have kidneys, diseases, lungs, you know, and um, there you could uh, also get some practical skills because these are very useful treatment. We have the uh, healing waters. Uh, there you could also enjoy um, marvelous views, uh, valleys, um, amazing nature, very green, lavishing. I mean, it's totally fantastic. Um, we are currently located in Odessa. As I told you, this is one of the architectural um, centers, very popular uh, among tourists. Uh, we have one of the most wonderful um, coasts uh, in, I mean, in Europe, because a lot of people from Europe, uh, apart from the Mediterranean, you could come and enjoy the Black Sea. Uh, besides, we also, um, the architecture is wonderful. We have the, for example, Opera House, which is one of the most beautiful buildings in Europe. Um, actually, there are a lot of things to enjoy. Besides, uh, people are very hospitable in uh, Odessa. You could easily find, the youth easily finds a lot of things to do. You could go partying, uh, you could uh, explore the nature and uh, enjoy the architecture, different things. So in Odessa, we have Odessa National Medical University. It's a very old uh, history uh, of the uh, high class education uh, in terms of medicine. The universities I'm going to talk about right now, they are concentrated in Odessa, Vinitsa, and Kiev. Let me show you this on the map one more time. That's located in these areas. So here is Kiev. You can see a small star in it. That's the capital. Um, here we have Vinitsa, and this is Odessa. Yeah, so you could see these three stars. These are the universities I'm going to share with you. These are the universities with the best reputation in our country in terms of medicine, and um, therefore they all of them offer a general medicine course, pharmacy, and dentistry. Um, National Medical University in Odessa has very long history. A lot of professors and a lot of uh, people who got their PhDs are working in this uh, university. There is also a hospital which we, um, which the medical university uh, is connected with, and uh, students from this university can get their internship and practical skills uh, in this uh, hospital. There is also a museum of the pathology and astic, uh, pathological things. Uh, um, I'm. Personally, I am 
kind of afraid of this stuff, but it's uh, very interesting to um, examine. And uh, the students from this from uh, university get access to the libraries, uh, ancient libraries and uh, museums and um, hospitals that the university is connected with. So another city I'm going to tell you about is Vinitsa. I guess one of the students which, who is going to share his um, experience about uh, what is it like in, uh, Vin uh, to study is coming from Vinitsa. He is studying in Vinitsa Medical University. That is the city which is located in the central part of, the, um, of, of Ukraine. And uh, again, it's uh, the city with wonderful nature, a very mild climate and uh, nice hospitable people. However, this city is a bit smaller than, for example, Odessa and Kiev. Odessa is much bigger. Uh, Kiev is the capital. It uh, could be compared to larger cities in Europe, larger capitals. And um, you could see that Vinitsa is very uh, popular for its fountains, uh, for the rivers. Uh, it's, uh, if you go further from the city, you could enjoy the forests. Um, and actually, there are also a lot of things for, offered for the entertainment. So you will never get bored. Uh, Vinitsa Medical University is also the university with um, a, a very nice historical uh, background. Again, uh, we ha they, ha they are offering a lot of professors and uh, PhDs. Actually, in general, the universities I'm talking about are the universities with very good reputation. And um, they, uh, you could enjoy the studying there because um, the professors uh, who are teaching in this university, they come from post-Soviet environment and the education in these uh, countries used to be very uh, on very high level. Uh, so, uh, so I guess we could be very proud to still be able to uh, be taught by the professors from the uh, post-Soviet countries, um, from the Soviet Union. So uh, you could see that a lot of students are choosing uh, Vinitsa Medical University as well. They uh, offer a lot of practical studies. Um, you could, uh, they are actually uh, uh, closely working with uh, pathologists, uh, pathologists, and they are, um, and patient scientists. So you could uh, actually in, um, start trying operating and working with the bodies already on the second year of studies. Uh, generally, the four, first four years to get the bachelor degrees are concentrated on the general medicine. And after four years, you are going to choose, refers to all of the universities, you're going to choose your specialty. So you would be the doctor that is either specialized in the kidneys or pulmonologists. Uh, so you are going to specialize in the lung diseases. And um, so you, you choose your specialty. However, from the very beginning, you have to choose whether you are um, going to study dentistry, pharmacy, or the general medicine. Now I'm going to talk about Kiev. Kiev is the capital of Ukraine. It's a huge city, uh, bustling, busy, with a lot of options, much easier to find the job in, uh, which is also famous for its views, churches, wonderful places. Um, you could see the views from Kiev on the pictures. And um, it's very, it uh, could be compared to one of the most busy capitals in Europe, I don't know, like Paris or Berlin. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, people current, uh, are coming there to find uh, the better future prospects and uh, a better job, well paid as well. A lot of head offices are located in Kiev. So it's um, a bustling and big, uh, huge, enormous city with a subway and uh, people are a bit you know, uh, colder here because they are constantly in a rush, in a hurry. So, but you could understand that. Well, Kiev Medical University is uh, also a very popular location for the studies. Actually, the biggest universities in our country are located in uh, our capital. Again, these are uh, universities with excellent reputation, very well financed uh, because they are located in the capital. And, um, 
again, they also uh, are connected with uh, hospital, uh, hospitals, which uh, the students are allowed to pass their internship in. Okay, so uh, Ukraine is a safe country. I can uh, show you the graph which demonstrates the how much um, the rate, the percentage of the students is constantly rising. People from abroad are coming to uh, Ukraine uh, just for studies because uh, I guess one of the first reasons they choose our country is because the pricing uh, of the education is not as expensive as in Europe. However, the quality is on the very good level. And uh, I guess after that, as soon as they, um, as soon as the first, so to say, impression passes, I guess they're simply in love with their co the country and they decide to stay and uh, um, com continue with their studies. So uh, you could see, for example, from the year 2011, we had 53,000 uh, uh, students in our country. Right now, the number is more than 80,000 students uh, that are coming from different countries to study in Ukraine. So the country that our students, uh, into, um, foreign students are coming is a lot of them are from India. People from India choose uh, mostly uh, medical specialities. However, there are a lot of different other specialities that uh, Ukraine could offer you. That would include engineering, uh, that would include um, some mathematic, uh, management, economy, law, uh, different other specialties as well. So uh, the majority are coming from India, as you can see from this graph, 10% uh, are from Morocco, then comes Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Nigeria, uh, Turkey, China, Egypt, uh, Israel, and other nationalities. And so uh, judging from the fact that a lot of students are uh, coming, uh, I could assure you that this is a very uh, nice country to stay at and uh, very hospitable for foreign students. So the students in our country um, and from the medical specialities enjoy their uh, studying. Uh, they could also enjoy outdoor activities. However, they could also focus on their uh, career and um, participate in numerous conferences, exhibitions that the uh, universities, all of the mentioned uh, universities are taking part in. Uh, you could see, for example, some funny pictures, how uh, they, uh, just medical students are actually all the time joking around dead bodies. I don't know why they're doing that, but this is kind of what medical students are. They uh, got their kind of uh, dark humor developed after that. Uh, so you could see that um, the um, rooms uh, with, where the students are studying uh, usually very spacious ones for the lectures. However, they also have some practical lessons and after that they're divided into smaller groups and uh, they could communicate and negotiate with their teachers regarding different issues. Uh, they uh, got some uh, works uh, in the laboratories uh, so uh, or uh, with the dead bodies. <laughs> uh, so different uh, kind of stuff. Uh, you could also see that there are a lot of pictures with the foreign students and international students that are coming to Ukraine to study uh, medicine. So the main advantages of studying in Ukraine, I guess, is that you will receive first and foremost, uh, you shouldn't say where uh, it turns your future, where uh, it regards your future. So it's a high level of education, definitely one of the best professors in the world. You know that from Ukraine, a lot of people are uh, going to work in Europe, in the United States, and they're all the time welcome because the, um, people actually are valued for their knowledge. Uh, so the admission process is actually quite short. Uh, you just have to, uh, I will explain what is uh, the admission process later, uh, step by step, what it takes. Um, but in general, you could apply twice a year and um, the, um, they're not going to, to it, it is not going to take you one year to find out whether you are accepted or not. So it happens quite fast, unlike, for example, a European countries or the United States. So the price, uh, the again, one of the 
very important issues for uh, foreign students, of course, is the cost of education. And um, uh, therefore, again, a lot of people choose Ukraine because uh, the pricing is not as high as in Europe or in the United States. The general uh, fee for the university is approximately $5,000 a year. However, for some specialities, it's even lower. For example, for um, medical, uh, Kiev National Medical University in our capital, the pharmacy faculty costs four thousand. Uh, I mean, it's like three thousand eight hundred dollars a year, so much cheaper than that. Um, again, there is no need to pass IELTS. Usually, uh, that's also one of the bigger problems. So, if you uh, would like to have some additional time to to spend in studying English, uh, you could also, and not lose time and still get your higher education, you could also uh, use this benefit. Um, of course, some um, knowledge of English are required, otherwise how would you understand uh, the lectures? So therefore it's very important. However, you do not pass um, any uh, IELTS examination. You are going to come to our country and you are going to write a test, which is for free unlike IELTS, which costs about $200. So uh, you're just going to write some, um, to, to make the block of tests, there would be two blocks of tests and write an essay. And uh, then uh, your knowledge of English would be found out by the university. So the internship, right? Uh, again, one of the biggest advantages because Ukraine offers a bachelor's degree. You could also get your master's degree. You could also write your PhD degree if you'd like uh, to have to continue your studies and become uh, scientific uh, to write a scientific research. And um, internship is offered by our universities. You could um, use different medical institutions and centers and hospitals to get your internship there. Uh, so the uh, getting practical skills, again, it's one of the important things because uh, usually generally people, uh, medical students are not allowed um, to go around uh, the bodies and um, start operating um, for uh, till the fourth year of studies in generally, but for example, in Ukraine, that starts much sooner. So the second year, you could already have some lessons um, and uh, master your practical skills. So you will get uh, access to university libraries, uh, again, with a lot of information, um, very ancient ones. Uh, I've been once to the medical library in um, Odessa, and uh, it goes about five stocks in the basement. So it's like, it's a huge building from the outside, but it still goes five stocks in the basement. So it's huge and a lot of uh, very informative and you can spend uh, as much time as you want there. Um, university museums, right? As, well, as I mentioned to you, some of the uh, universities have their own museum on the territory of the, like on the uh, territory of the university. There are also some diagnostic centers. Uh, they usually have some cooperation with the forensic scientists. So it depends what kind of um, doctor you would like to be, but still you will get uh, the bright variety of knowledge about everything. Um, friendly and hospitable environment, although I put it as one of the last uh, advantages, I guess, for the foreign students, it's extremely important to realize that whenever they are going to uh, be in a different country, there will be people who would be supportive, uh, friendly, hospitable. So uh, I guess that this is one of the things that Ukraine can actually boast about because um, people from Ukraine are, are very nice and tolerant and um, you could experience that uh, even if you stay there for a short period of time. And for you, like one of the last advantages that you, for example, with the African countries like Kenya and Tanzania, we're in the same zones, uh, time zone, so you will have no jet lag. So uh, the process of getting a visa, uh, there are, it's uh, actually not that complicated as in uh, the United States, for example. Uh, all you have to do is to submit to the uh, embassy your passport, your birth certificate, certificate from high school with the marks. 
and uh, insurance and medical clearance, some kind of examination report, which would be valuable, uh, valid for the uh, higher educational establishments and some pictures. Uh, so uh, all you have to do is that all the documents, an important thing is that they should be translated into Ukrainian and legally notarized. Uh, the documents uh, that uh, you are going to submit, you could, for example, for the students from uh, Kenya and Tanzania, you could uh, go to the Ukrainian embassy in Nairobi. Um, they are usually accepting your documents and uh, giving you the visa. So uh, let's start with uh, step by step. How is your admission? What is your admission process, and uh, how is it uh, carried out? Again, I could tell you that it's going to be a bit easier than in um, uh, countries of the Europe. Uh, so you just get in touch with the university you've decided. Uh, I've mentioned to you Kiev Medical National University, the one in Vinnytsia and the one in Odessa. However, if you are interested and if you contact us, there are also other uh, in the universities. For example, there is one in Ternopil, one in Dnipropetrovsk. Uh, all you have to do is just to, all we have to do is just to make sure that they are offering English um, program this year because it sometimes is variable, uh, it sometimes changes. Um, there are some years that they are offering um, English programs for the, all, all of the courses and they are accepting international students, uh, sometimes they don't. So it depends and we, if you are interested, we could find out some information. The price uh, for the education in this university is a bit lower, uh, that's about $4,000 a year, but we have to make sure that they are accepting foreign students this particular year. So if you're interested, there are also other wider range of options that we could offer you. So uh, you get in touch with the university you have chosen and you fill in the questionnaire that is going to cover some questions regarding your identity, you know, your um, next of kings and uh, the uh, high school and so on. So your passport and uh, your certificate, uh, you're going to send them on the email of the university you have decided. Uh, then you, um, as soon as uh, they have uh, looked through your documents, you're going to get an invitation letter and apply for a visa. I've uh, mentioned to you already that uh, all the documents that you have to collect for applying to study, uh, to get the visa in Ukraine. Uh, then, uh, as soon as you got the visa, you notify uh, the university uh, about your arrival. It should be minimum one week so that um, we or our company or the university could arrange the transfer for you. Uh, for example, uh, Odessa uh, and uh, in Kiev, we have international airports, so the journey is not going to take you long. However, in Vinitsa, there is no international airport and you have to um, go there by car or by train that could be arranged. So you are welcome and accepted twice a year, uh, starting with the uh, 12th of August till the 1st of uh, November. Or for the second term, you could uh, come starting with the 1st of February or the 3rd of uh, March. The dates um, are uh, um, may vary from university um, two or three days before and the, uh, behind, but still these uh, approximate dates of when are you supposed to arrive. So you could start your term not only in uh, September, but also in February. So uh, then as soon as you arrive, you would be, of course, picked up from the airport from your accommodation. And uh, within the first uh, couple of days, you have to pass the test in biology, chemistry, and English. Um, as I told you, English is going to be something like two blocks of tests with um, uh, an essay to write with a writing assignment. And biology and chemistry, these are going to be also tests and maybe some questions could be asked by the examinator. Uh, so the, upon the results of the test, you will be either a freshman, so you could start um, getting your education and become the first year student, or you will be offered the placement course. 
course. The placement course are usually, well, you could actually judge from the, your knowledge of English and your knowledge of chemistry and biology. Um, usually these tests um, are like 200 points. You could get 200 points. And uh, it's only 120 points, the lowest level for you to be accepted. So actually that's uh, not very strict environment. However, if you are very uh, bad in your knowledge of uh, biology, chemistry and English, and you know that, uh, you could also come to, be pre to get prepared uh, for your studies. Um, for one year. The first year of studies in Ukraine, uh, like if it is not the first uh, university year, if it is just a preparatory course or a placement course, uh, is uh, going to cost you much lower. It's about $1,500. And um, this is the year where you could um, actually get ready for studying on the European level. Uh, so after that, uh, when everything is ready, you just have to uh, send all your documents. This is the law in our country. Uh, all the foreign students must um, get through the process of nostrification. Nostrification, this is actually when your documents are checked whether they are authentic or not. So um, it's a complicated process. It's going to take you about eight months. Uh, you do not have anything to do with you or with you. you just have to um, give your uh, certificates from the high school and with the marks and your passport uh, to the Ministry of Education of Ukraine. They are going to check. Uh, and if everything is okay, if this is not a fake or a forgery, uh, you could continue your studies. So it's actually, you could do this um, during your first year of studies. Uh, if uh, you could do this also in uh, beforehand, for example, by um, sending your documents uh, which are also legally authorized and translated uh, with, uh, together with your visa also to the Ministry of Education in of Ukraine. And then you would get this process arranged uh, before your arrival to our country. So uh, that is also possible. However, I must warn you that if your documents are not authentic from the high school, um, if the certificate or the marks, then you would be expelled. But uh, again, why would you send uh, fake documents, right? So the, then uh, additional uh, English and Russian courses will be offered to you uh, as it is for all the foreign students. Uh, Russian is just for some uh, basic routine understanding so that you could go around um, the country a bit easier um, so that you could, I don't know, go to the shop or the market. And uh, English, uh, that's the uh, also one of the customer procedures. All of the foreign students have some additional English language lessons. Uh, we could also provide you with some induction. Uh, so just uh, tell you uh, what kind of transport vehicles could you use? What kind of, um, where are the best products to buy? Actually, the food in Ukraine is very tasty and, uh, and you would enjoy the fresh vegetables, fresh fruit. Uh, right now we have the high seasons of the strawberries, peaches. So there are a lot of things to enjoy. And we could also uh, get you some information regarding these things. And one of the other things that um, I didn't put here is that uh, you could you also have to apply to the uh, immigration office so that they could uh, give you a short uh, certificate of the fact that you are a foreign student on the territory of Ukraine. And um, also it's uh, actually very advised by the embassies whenever you're coming to actually any foreign countries, you could send them the email uh, in any form you like, we could also assist you with this one. Um, just writing, for example, that I'm the students of uh, Kenya or uh, India or Tanzania, and I'm currently on the territory of Ukraine. My, uh, I'm going to depart on the, let's say, 1st of June, right? So you just uh, send this uh, um, information on the email that it's um, useful for the embassy so that they know uh, that uh, the citizen of a different country is located on the territory and so that they could react quickly in case of any emergency. And um, also that's um, a customer, just a customer routine procedure. 
Okay, so uh, if you are a travel student, if you are traveling from uh, Kenya or Tanzania, you could easily get the flight from Nairobi. Uh, if you are traveling from India, you could easily get the flight from Delhi. Um, most of the, the them are coming to the uh, key to Kiev to the capital. We have Bariskal Airport. Uh, however, uh, in Odessa, we also have uh, international airport, and if you decide, for example, to study in Odessa, we could either uh, arrange a flight from Kiev to Odessa or get it uh, directly from Istanbul to Odessa. Um, I'm not sure we were supposed to have, we, we did once uh, have the direct flight from Kiev to Nairobi. Uh, however, with the current situation, I'm not sure whether they're going to start it again. But anyway, the stops could be made in Istanbul. Um, and uh, we will definitely help you to arrange your flight comfortable and for a very for better price even that the realistic picture. But the way the price range, as you can see, is um, totally different. It could cost about $400, it could cost about $700. It depends on the dates. We will try to find the best and uh, the cheapest flight for you. Uh, so some additional costs that you might have uh, of course, the travel expenses on top of the studies, uh, some visa support and invitation letter. The visa varies from country to country, depends where you're coming from. Uh, it's about $100 in uh, Nairobi, it's about $150 for Indian students. It, uh, you are going to get an ordinary uh, student um, uh, visa, and uh, it depends like what, what are the fees of the embassy. Then the nostrification, uh, checking whether your documents are authentic by the Ministry of Education of Ukraine. Um, that's a standard fee, it costs about $200. Uh, the accommodation, uh, you would be offered a room in a campus, uh, that would, about, uh, would be about 800, uh, I'm sorry, eighty uh, dollars a month, and uh, there are different types of rooms. So you could find one cheaper, a bit more expensive if you'd like to stay alone. That could be also the options. Uh, in the room, there are usually four students. You could choose uh, it to be just two, um, if you if you want to. And um, there are, there are always all the time different other housing options. For example. You could stay in um, an apartment. We could also help you, insist you in renting an apartment. And if you share with your uh, mates, for example, if you're not coming alone, that's going to be a bit uh, cheaper than uh, in campus even, but with the better, uh, probably with the um, better facilities. Uh, so the medical examination upon arrival, that's again a customer procedure. You're going to be examined and um, Upon the uh, upon the arrival to the university, and you have to get the certificate of the fact that you have no no diseases and so on. That's about one hundred dollars examination. It varies from city to city, so it uh, might be different. Uh, one hundred is the top; it could be even lower. Um, the airport transfer again. If you, for example, uh, decide to study in the location where you have. Uh, international airport, so that's Kyiv and Odessa, the airport transfer is going to be lower for you because you just need to, um, we could either arrange a pickup for you, get a car, or you could uh, get the taxi. However, if uh, you decide to travel in the more distant, uh, to study in the more dis distant and remote places, for example, like Vinnytsia, Ternopil, they do not have any international airport and therefore uh, we would have to find the car or the train uh, that could uh, bring you from the international airport to this location. So that would uh, cost a bit more. And the immigration office here is usually standard. It's about $30. So it's uh, just the um, certificate that you're going to uh, have as the foreign student, student on the territory of our country. So that's it and no additional costs more. So uh, what about the future prospects? What would studying in Ukraine actually give you? Uh, first of all, our students cooperate with universities in the European Union. Um, here are some um, examples listed. If Kiev National Medical University cooperates with Roslov Medical University in Poland, 
for example, the university in Vinitsa uh, has uh, they signed has signed the agreements with the Turkish Medical University, and as you know, that's uh, also one of the very good basic. Uh, fundamental educational establishment. Odessa uh, has uh, an agreement with Lublin that's also located in Poland and Konos with Lithuania. Uh, they also uh, have tight uh, connections. They usually participate uh, in different, you could participate in different conferences and um, if you'd like to get some kind of the transfer to get your master's degree, for example, that could be also arranged. Uh, you could also decide uh, to get some postgraduate state studies in Ukrainian medical centers. They also offer quite a huge spectrum of um, services, for example, cosmetology or uh, injections of the face and body treatment. As you know, these um, procedures and services are quite expensive in um, the United States and in European Union. So if you actually know how to uh, inject Botox, I, I'm sure you would always have the job. Um, so you could study some, decide for some postgraduate studies in dentistry, gynecology, and different uh, expensive uh, specialities. You can also decide to uh, become a doctor in the United States uh, and invest in your education. Um, we have uh, some connections with the USMLE program and uh, they would uh, be happy and welcome to uh, get students from Ukraine because again, they know that the level of the preparation is quite high uh, and of their knowledge and of their education. Uh, you could easily, for example, use uh, Ukrainian universities as the trampoline to become a doctor in the United States and uh, get the access uh, to study, uh, for example, starting with the third year or the second year, uh, you need to get ready yourself for the uh, USMLE exam. And uh, then you will have a completely different future prospects and career. And you know that the doctors in the United States, um, they usually earn about $100,000 uh, $100, a month. Uh, a year, I'm sorry, no, not a month, a month, a month. and um, that's um, a completely different uh, career for yourself. Um, again, uh, they are all the time accepting our students and we could easily assist you on this one if you decide to do that. Uh, or you could start working on your PhD in Ukraine, on your scientific work, uh, your thesis and become the uh, PhD or get, get the master's and then the PhD in Ukraine or any other countries. In fact, if you, for example, um, look at the first uh, option, uh, you could um, start writing your PhD in Ukraine and continue doing it in any different countries of the European Union, such as uh, Poland or Lithuania or any other country that our universities have agreement with. Okay, so that's it, basically. Thank you for your attention. Um, Thank you very much, Miss Genia. Thank you. It was a perfect uh, and wonderful presentation with a lot of details. Um, now, uh, you know, from a perspective of an educational expert, Ms. Genia has uh, given us a lot of information. Now, I'd, I would like to uh, welcome one of the students who studied in Ukraine. Now, he is currently a doctor in Tanzania, Mr. Hussein. Uh, if you are listening to me, can you? Yeah. Hello. Hello. How are you, Mr. Hello. Hussein? I'm fine, Mr. Ahmed. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm fine too. So I know that you have uh, studied the whole uh, program in Ukraine. So uh, I think our students and the new students, prospective students who are looking for the uh, study options, especially for medicine abroad, so what you would like to say about uh, Ukraine and medical studies in Ukraine. So you can give us the information about your brief uh, history, which universities you have attended, how did you apply, what did you find in your first year, and what do you recommend to the students, etc. You're welcome. Okay. 
Um, maybe I'll start with my uni journey. I was in studying biological science and then in Canada and then I transferred to South Africa. The same thing, biological science. But then um, I met someone there who was studying medicine in Ukraine, a friend of mine. And he asked me, why don't you come and study in, uh, medicine in Ukraine instead of South Africa, which was more expensive and they had a lot of uh, bureaucracy to attend uh, medicine in South Africa. So I asked him if he can uh, help me how to get admission there. So he just told me to send uh, him the application fee for the later invitation. And uh, that's it. And just send him my university and previous uh, high school and uh, all level uh, results. So I sent him all my documents and uh, yeah, I got the invitation later. So I dropped out from uh, biological science in my third year. Yeah, in my third year to join medicine in Ukraine. And um, another challenge I'll just say before going there, it's like uh, on the application visa process, uh, in Nairobi, the office at the embassy of Ukraine, they are very stubborn, honestly. That's one thing for sure. So when you go there, recommend like uh, all your documents first to have them uh, certified by your Ministry of Education of Tanzania. Or else if you just go there with nothing, they'll send you back. And um, once in the flight from here to Ukraine, uh, I normally used Turkish Airlines direct from here to Istanbul and Istanbul to my city. The university in Ukraine I attended was in the western side. It is called Lviv, State, Lviv National Medical University. It's like uh, the border of Poland on the eastern side of uh, the western side of Ukraine, which is the Ukrainian side. And the eastern side, they more they mostly uh, speak Russian, so that's the Russian side of Ukraine. And if you remember, you guys about the civil war in Ukraine at that time, it was between the Russian and the Ukrainian side. The Ukrainian side want to join the EU, the Russian side doesn't want to join the EU. So that's the problem <coughs> there in that country. And about admission, once you get there. Um, the university will uh, take you in, you bring them your invitation later, and uh, they'll give you as the lady before here, she speaks about the interview, yes. They have a short, uh, an admission exam. It's not like an interview, it's very short. And the English there, it's like, uh, if you come from Tanzania, I'll just say it's like uh, form one English, form one, form two English, it's very simple, it's like, a pen is on the table. You just fill it on the table very easily. And you just explain yourself, uh, talking about yourself a little bit. And uh, chemistry and biology, which are easy. So you don't have to stress yourself about that exam. It's very easy to pass. And on admission, um, and once you arrive there on like, uh, the first year, first of all, they have the, the program starts in August, but if you arrive in October, they'll still accept you. They still accept even you go in November, but after November, you won't join the uh, first year program. They'll put you into PADFAC, the pre, 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 the pre-course, one year pre-course where you study the Ukrainian language, you study their culture and uh, their history. Also, you study a bit of uh, chemistry and biology. So to still refresh your mind about uh, those stuff while you're studying about their, the new culture of Ukraine. And, uh, but if you arrive on time, you straight away join uh, first year. And the first, second, and third year, they are not that hard, they are easy. It depends with the student themselves. Like if you take serious about studying, then things will be easy. But if you're just enjoying life, you new culture, culture shock, and you forget what uh, took you there, then you'll find it difficult. Because in the third year, they have the national exam 
whereby you have to pass to continue to the fourth year, fifth year, and sixth year. Ukraine, they have six years of medicine, not five like here in Tanzania. And um, so in your third year, you do your exam. If you fail, you'll have to receive that exam. And receiving it, you have to go to the capital, Kiev. And um, after that, that's the third year where they mostly teach the theoretical part of medicine. And from fourth, fifth, and sixth year, majority is practical part where we attend mostly uh, hospitals, we see patients, we talk with them, we do some small uh, uh, exams. And then, uh, but on practice side, you we are not allowed to to maybe do some IV cannulation or take some urine test, like simple things where in uh, here in Tanzania, medical students are allowed to do that in our medical, uh, medical hospitals. But in Ukraine, you are not allowed to do that. You're only allowed to maybe feel the heartbeat, the pulse rate, but those are other exams, they don't allow you to do it unless uh, the patient they feel comfortable to let you to do uh, to let you do it because there is some I'll speak about this later. <clears throat> um, about uh, let me talk about accommodation. On accommodation, um, there's hostel. The hostel fee in uh, Lviv where I was right now it's uh, seven hundred and ninety dollars per year. Yeah, it's seven hundred and ninety dollars per year. And the school fees are uh, 4,900 per year. <clears throat> but you can pay per, in, uh, per semester, if you can pay per year. And um, in hostel, that's $780. It covers uh, electricity. It covers the heating for winter month. It covers for the gas where you'll be cooking. There are kitchens there. And... Uh, that's what it covers. So it's cheaper to live in hostel than in your own apartment. But most people, most students, they don't like the hostel lifestyle because like the hostel are not clean. The gas cookers, or they have been there since the 90s. They rarely like renovate them. And the room, it's like very congested. You might like a small room, you can be sleeping four people or even two and you share like a, one bathroom with other six people in one room, you see. So it's like very congested. So most people prefer to find an apartment and apartment accommodation is very cheap. Mostly apartments, they range from $150 to $300, depends with your pocket and where you wanna stay, how far from the university, or you can find an apartment and share with your colleagues and just be paying half of the 300. Like I used to stay with two other friends and we had a three room apartment and it was $300. So we each paid a hundred each. It was cheaper for us. And in uh, there, the charges for electricity and water and gas bills in normal month, they range from 50 to a hundred dollars. But in winter month, that can increase to $150 because you have to pay for the extra heating of the apartment. And um, for food, for another thing, okay. Ukraine, it's very cheap for transportation. Their transportation system, it's one of the cheapest I've ever, I've ever experienced, I'll say. So, and since for attending classes, maybe for this, maybe for TB, you have to go to another outside of Dar es Salaam, to Kibaha, that's where the TB hospital is. You go there after TB class, you have to go maybe to attend psychology, where it's at Mloganzila. So you have to, for, from Kibaha to Mloganzila, and between there, you are given like 40 minutes. So we used to like rent, uh, they normally have these taxes, big one, big vans where 12 people can stay in. So they, you normally call the tax company and you tell them, I need a taxi for how many people they send you the taxi. And then you can all chip in for the transportation and go to whatever class you want to go attend and be there in time. 
But if you take the public transportation, like buses, I used to take that, but for classes where I wasn't in a rush, but it's very cheap also. And uh, for food culture, about food, uh, Ukrainian have nice food. I won't say nice, nice, but it's okay. But the thing is, uh, it's, uh, the Lviv uh, city I was staying was like a multicultural city. People from different culture, countries. They had different restaurants. So we, you could eat here, maybe today an African food, tomorrow an Arabian, Indian, Chinese, Thai. So you, it all depends on you. Also, you can just go to the market, buy food and cook for yourself, which is much cheaper. Yeah, and for those Muslims guys, it's better to buy your own food and cook because some of the, their food, it mostly need to have pork. They love pork, so you have to be careful about that. You have to ask. Um, about pocket money, you can, uh, you need money, of course, for your accommodation and everything. But I'll say if you need to have us, you need, you have, you need a simple life. You don't have, you don't need like fancy stuff, going to the clubs, uh, buying a car or something like that. Just live as a student. Then pocket money, I think uh, 200 to 250 or even 300 per month. That's more than enough for you. Even I'll say $500. That's enough to cover your apartment. If you get for 150, 200, uh, $200 apartment, it's enough to cover for your food and transportation. $500. That's enough for a month. And if you are staying not in hostel, if you are staying in hostel, even $200 is enough for you for a month. And yeah, for flying tickets, I think the lady there already talked about the prices. I normally use Turkish Airlines, which was uh, the cheapest flight I knew to Ukraine, to the city where I was, because my, it had a direct flight from Istanbul to Lviv. It's like an hour and 30 minutes. It's a very short flight. So yeah, for flight uh, ticket, it was cheaper through Turkish Airways. And I recommend Turkish Airways. They are very cheap. About scholarship, scholarship depends with the, they don't give normally scholarships, Ukrainians, but the scholarship depends with the, the relationship they have with the different governments in uh, around the world. Like I remember there were a group of Angolans who are like 12 of them. We arrived on the same year. So, they are all on scholarship because uh, their government in Angola and Ukrainian government, they're in good uh, partnership. So I don't know what happened, they're on scholarship. But if you aren't there because of your good marks and uh, you need a scholarship, I don't think they do that for foreigners, maybe for their locals, Ukrainians. Because also another thing uh, I realized staying there for seven years, I know, we as foreigners, like for hostel, we pay much, 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 much more compared to the Ukrainians. But for what we are paying, according to their law, that's what I had. It like it covers for our, it covers for their local students. So the money we foreign students pay, it covers for them. And in, it's like there's unfairness in hostel because you who are paying much more, if you look your accommodation of the hostel, the rooms, the toilets and everything, they are not well looked after. They are very dirty and, uh, and not modernized. But if you look at the Ukrainian side of the hostel, there are rooms, toilets, everything, even their walls, they are so beautiful. They look so clean and fresh so you can see there's still some favorism there you'll you'll find it there once you go there if inshallah and um, so for scholarship i don't think you'll get any scholarship unless you get a scholarship from here tanzania which sends you there um most people i know you'll be concerned about your security and uh since it's a Europe, Eastern European card, what about racism? Okay. 
Um, as I said, Ukrainian, it's mostly like the Eastern and Western side. The uh, Russian, the Ukrainian side. The Russian speaking side, the Ukrainian speaking side. Um, I had friends who are on the Russian speaking side, or even during that time of the civil war, they were attending uh, Odessa, Venezia, they all transferred to Lviv. And uh, they told me about the experience there, how life is, it's, uh, it's good and everything, but according to the security and racism, it's very open compared to the uh, Ukrainian speaking side, because that side they have the Russian speaking side and the mentality still of this, uh, the socialist mentality. It's like, uh, they'll complain like they'll be just walking on the street and they'll be attacking randomly for no reason by a group of young boys. Some girls had their beaten there. So it's like, it depends with uh, how, you utilize your time at night and your friends also. Like if you work together in groups of three, four, then I think you're safe. But if you work alone at night after 11, 10, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., then something can happen to you. And uh, another thing, it's all about the Ukrainians, men, men, I'll say, they just, they don't feel like uh, you, um, foreigners. They feel like foreigners come in their countries and maybe take their jobs, um, change the, their women and stuff. So they don't like that. So it's the, mostly the Ukrainian men who are more aggressive and violent towards foreigners. Um, but the Ukrainian ladies, they are very nice, kind. The Ukrainian old people, they are very nice and kind. Like they're the nicest, the old people in Ukraine. They are nice and friendly. <clears throat> so racism, it's there, but it's, it depends with the place and the people you meet also. But it's there, you'll experience the racism. It's right there. University, about the university environment and facilities. We have access to libraries. We have access to the labs. Um, we also have access to the computer labs. Like the university is very well equipped. You can even go to the post-mortem uh, department and uh, see how they do the forensic science, how they uh, dissect the human body, all that, it's there. You, are, you have access to everything. So it all depends with your motivation, how much you want to know. But most people uh, I know, once you go to another country, new culture and stuff, you forget your goal. What is your purpose to be in that country? So. You just lose your motivation. But if you have the motivation and stuff, all this facility, you can have access to them because they're all there provided for you. And uh, like the university is surrounded by hospitals only. Like there's a special hospital, obstetrics only, deals with pregnant women only. There's a gynecological hospital which deals only with women problems. There's a hospital which deals only with blood. So every once you go from one um, from one course to another course maybe this course about uh, psychology you'll attend uh, you'll go to the psychologist uh, mental hospital maybe it's uh, far away from town so you'll like, follow the professor there and most of the professors are all doctors they are doctors who are working in hospitals so you have to follow them instead of them following you that's how you attend the lectures. And uh, yeah, the classes, but we do have lectures where maybe the professor or his assistant, might, they might come in, teach at the uh, university campus because the most of the lectures are within the university campus. But the classes, you have to follow the doctors uh, where they are working. So it can be different uh, locations within the city. And um, if you want to do an internship program, 
because for my I don't know about the other universe like Odessa and uh, Kharkiv or Kiev but uh, in Lviv during fourth and fifth year like if you want to get credits for graduating you need to do a summer program for one month in a hospital to rotate in four program like in medical medical internal medicine in obstetrics and gynecology in uh, surgery yeah you have to rotate in the, in, in pediatrics so they need you why if in summer if you are staying in ukraine you don't go back to your home country then in summer you'll be attending those are uh, pro summer program in different hospitals where you will uh, see your professors but if you are going to your back to your country you can attend them i used to do them at mwananyamala hospital and at the end of the uh, the program mwananyamala gives you a letter of approval a certificate that you practice your program there and then once you go back to your university you show them they add your credits so in the final year your credits are there but it's a must to do that practical summer program in your fourth and fifth year in third year it's not a must but they recommend after you have uh, third year that exam if you pass then record they recommend to do internship every summer program to get uh, better credits for your final year and uh internship opportunity uh, opportunities post graduate they are very narrow if for foreigners it's like very 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 narrow unless you study ukrainian language from that part back here and you become like very fluent like the uh, professors and the doctors they know you you uh, during uh, free time you go to the hospitals you help them out like you show them that you're interested in medicine and everything then they can uh, recommend some they can do their own thing and give you a scholarship like one of my friend now is a dentist there he's married he has a child he's from lebanon so at the end of the day he did that and he's there now and um in general as i said life in uh, ukraine it's cheap it's not hard it's like i'll say it's even cheaper than dar es salaam and uh, due to the weather it's uh, cold there and uh, due to the weather it's you will prefer walking than taking like uh, transportation most of the time i used to walk a lot because it's not hot the weather is nice and even the roads like you don't find a pot a uh, pot of water somewhere like a pothole or anything like that the roads are nice and at the moment they have like um, a partnership with the uh, yepi markets the turkish company so when i was living there was a lot of renovation going on around the city like the roads the buildings and uh, not only in uh, lviv but uh, the whole this the whole side of uh, eastern ukraine so so you're saying i uh, uh, yes um, thank you for your all those information we have one more friend mustafa uh, yes. also the time is going we would like to give him the chance but if you can stay okay. with us by the end of the session we will have the question and answer session most likely you might be in need of answering some questions which the students they are going to ask thank you very much okay okay mustafa mr mustafa ali Hello, assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome, wa alaikum salam. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Alhamdulillah. What about you? Uh, Mr. Musawa, we have a uh, very limited time actually. So you are already studying over there in the fourth year, as I know. Right. So can you also uh, give uh, on top of the uh, Miss Jenia and uh, Hussein from Tanzania has mentioned some things, but your experiences maybe you can give shortly and briefly. and now we are going to shift to the question and answer section okay sure um i'm a fourth year student in uh, venice um venice is um situated in the west side of ukraine its population is around 200000 so 
it's not it's a very small um city um so and my journey started in 2016 i finished light academy in 2015 then i did one year uh, a level in oswald then i applied for my university in uh, uh, ukraine the reason i i preferred ukraine was like i had a cousin who was uh, studying in ukraine at the moment so he like he like helped me out with the procedure and i just like uh, i sent my copy of the passport and my higher secondary education and after around 2 3 weeks they they replied to me yeah so they sent me the invitation letter and the cost uh, was around $300 yeah, and I paid around the, the airport uh, pickup, I paid around $1,500. As um, the lady mentioned, it covered all my, um, the airport pickup, the insurance, um, the, the medical checkup, the registration, all of them. So um, uh, as we mentioned above, um, Venice doesn't have an airport. So um, the students usually come from, they land in Borisville airport, when they usually they either take a train or a taxi, it depends. So the taxi may be like a hundred dollar, and the train is like maybe fifteen to fifteen dollars. The train is cheaper, but like the first time you arrive, so you don't know anything about the train, and so you have to take a taxi. So afterwards, I I enrolled a little bit late in October, end of October. So they allowed me to join, so I I started my university. And the university, Venice uh, University, they, they offer medicine, um, pharmacy, and, uh, and dentistry. The price is almost the same for dentistry and medicine, um, around $5,000, $5,200 for dentistry. So on the, uh, about the university, we have uh, four scale marks. Like every day we do like a random test about the previous um, day, what you learned, for example. So we have like, if you, if you get everything correct, like 100% equal, equal to five, we have like around 80%, which is four, and around 60, 70%, which is three. So below that, you're gonna get to two. But it isn't, it's not difficult. So they're gonna give you another chance so you can rework anytime. Yeah, as for the exams, the, the, in, the interview, it's not really an interview. It's like, we have uh, exams like in English, in chemistry and biology. So it's just a walkthrough. So you don't need to worry about the exams. So uh, about the, yeah, about the, uh, those like uh, who didn't do well in the, acad uh, the academic uh, performance, they, they undergo um, a foundation year. The foundation year uh, like cost uh, $1,200. So they're gonna go to Patfak, and, and do what our brother has mentioned. Um, as I know in Venice, we don't currently uh, have scholarships unless maybe your country pay for you, that's all. So in Venice, you know, I would prefer studying medicine in Venice because it's a, it's a quiet city, it's a small city, like they don't have a lot of uh, like entertainment things. So you're gonna be fo focused in, in your studies. And for the free time, we usually like just go to the parks, the fountains, which is the largest in Europe. The, we'll check out the rivers. That's what we do. So uh, that's it. So my first year was a little bit complicated because you know I was new to the country. I didn't know the language. So, so it took me like, there was a certain times I was like giving up, but you know, I had my cousin, so he helped me out. So right now, um, it feels like home. So I'm like, I'm four years. I, I'm living in Ukraine for four years and like, I can speak the language. So I would recommend like the, the students, uh, when they come to Ukraine, the first thing like, you know, the university, they're gonna teach you Ukrainian or Russian, but then they're not gonna teach you that well. So I would recommend you to go to the private classes and like maybe four times, three times a week, just learn the language so that you can be fluent. So that's it. About yeah, yeah about the hostels. Like I only recommend like to live in a hostel. 
despite like the, the hospital fees in Venice are around $600 a month, I, I, I mean a year, but you know, it's like, it's congested, like three, four people live in one room, like you're sharing a toilet, a bathroom. On the other side, it's better like you live in a apartment. The apartment, it depends with the, with the location. Like, so if you want a fancy apartment, it's gonna cost you maybe like $350, $400. But like a normal apartment, three hundred dollars, two hundred dollars for one person. You can share with your friends. And uh, about the about the accommodation, it also depends. Like if you you're the type of person like you go partying, you you just wait, you eat in the restaurant all the time, so it's gonna cost you expensive. But like a normal lifestyle, should cost you around. Uh, Around let's say 400, 500 is gonna 400. Um, I mean 500 dollars is more than enough, uh, including your, your your rent, your bills, everything. So yeah, and about uh, yeah in Ukraine we have uh, something called croc. So we have two crocs. Like in the first three years after the first, after the third year, we're gonna you're gonna do a croc. Yeah, it consists like around 200 questions. So if you pass, you, you, you proceed to the next um, uh, year, the fourth year. But if you didn't pass, you're gonna repeat the, the, the exam one more time. They're gonna give you one chance. Yeah, and for the, uh, after the fourth year, I recently just started my um, uh, practical skills. I started in third year, but in the fourth year, we most, uh, mostly we do some pract uh, practical training. Like we do less of theory, we go to the hospitals, we see the patients, like the doctors treating the patients. We, we take case histories, we ask them questions, we do palpation, like we measure heartbeat and all, and all of them. So um, that's all I have to say, I have to say about uh, Ukraine. And about- Thank about you very much, Mustafa. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you very much uh, for your. Thank you for giving me uh, the opportunity to speak about information. Maxwell. Also, you can stay with us if you have a time because uh, now we are going to shift to the question and answer uh, section. Uh, so, okay. if there will be some questions, maybe you may need to answer. Okay. Okay. All right. The first question. Is does Ukrainian university ask for English proficiency exam? If yes, how much? I think the score they are asking. Uh, Madam Genia, Miss Genia. Yeah, um, English proficiency exam uh, is not necessary. Uh, so you don't have to pass English proficiency exam. There will be an interview carried out upon your arrival, and uh, that's going to be the test and the essay or the oral interview with the English teacher. So he's going to, to check whether you are fluent in English. Thank you that's very it. much. Okay. Usain also has mentioned that he has passed through uh, such a test. It was very simple, actually. The second question. What is the minimum GPA to get admission? There is no such thing as minimum GPA. Uh, the universities are focusing on the subjects uh, that are um, English, uh, biology, and chemistry. These are most important subjects for them. So in these, uh, you have to have uh, good knowledge in these subjects and the rest. Uh, I mean, it's also, as they mentioned, it's kind of easy. Uh, but you still have to pass, and this is what is our main focus on. So the rest of the uh, subjects are of relevant importance to the university. I see. Okay, the, we can take the next question. Are there scholarships for the medicine or any other programs? I think uh, this yeah, question already, also has already been answered. Yeah, that was already mentioned. They, uh, there are no scholarships offered for uh, foreign students. Uh, however, you might find some uh, scholarships in your countries. Ukraine is not going to offer you any scholarships. The cost of the education is uh, actually affordable. Yes. 
maybe sometimes as the some brothers they have mentioned that there are some special agreements between the governments of the the Ukraine and uh, some other countries. So the, if there is such an agreement, maybe they can follow up the application process of those scholarship options. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But you have to check this in each individual case, depends on the country, depends on uh, uh, yes. where you're coming from and so on, yeah. Definitely. Uh, if someone gets admission for the September 2020 intake, will he or she start on September 2020 due to COVID-19? Yeah, this question always comes. Yeah, this is an important question because uh, you can see that situation is uh, unclear for the majority of people and not only in Ukraine, it goes about the Europe and so on. So uh, we will see what is um, the statistics regarding the disease and how is it progressing and how is it developing. So in case, um, even in case we still have to be shut, there will be online education provided definitely for sure, because our uh, teachers are uh, and professors at the universities that are, are working all the time on improving their distant learning. And um, in, even in the worst scenario ever, you are going to start online. In the best scenario ever, hopefully this COVID situation is going to diminish and disappear and everything will be get back to normal. Yeah, that's true. Actually, not only Ukraine, but also Germany, Poland, and the USA. Uh, currently, the students who, who applied for the spring semester, they couldn't travel, but they have already started their online education. So they uh, didn't miss any time for the, from their studies. As soon as I think the borders will be open, they will be able to uh, travel directed to their uh, respective countries to continue their normal education. The number five, the tuition fee you project, is, is it applicable for international students? I think that's, that fee is for international students, right? Yeah, all the fees we mentioned were for international students. That's right. That it's uh, with slight difference. Yeah, possible some kind of difference depending on which particular university are you choosing. But uh, that generally starts from 3,800 to 5,200 dollars uh, maximum price. Okay, number six. Would you please clarify about the accommodation and its fees? Is it 80, 200 for a month? Yeah, I think I can answer this question because both Mustafa and Hussein has mentioned about it. So per month, I think is $80. So in a year, which it costs $80 uh, or $1,000 in a year accommodation uh, costs. If you prefer the, isn't it Hussein? Yeah, it's, it's right. If you, if you, for example, you could pay $80, uh, $80 a month, you could also, I mean, they usually charge you a month, not a year, right? So you just yes. pay month per month. And besides, uh, there, as I mentioned in my presentation, there, this is not the only housing option, right? So this is just the room in campus. However, you might find an apartment and share it with three or four other students, and that would be a reasonable price for you as well. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Hussein also has got his own experience. He has stayed in the private apartment, I think. Yes, as I said, um, like in Lviv, for hostel, it's $790 per year. So that per year, it covers, they normally say in uh, winter, uh, summer month, you don't have to be within the the country or within the university, but you can stay there. So you pay seven ninety for twelve months, which is very cheap. But in whole uh, apartment or apartment, it can be expensive than that. But you can pay a hundred dollars if you share with three other people for a three hundred dollar apartment per month. So it okay. all depends with yeah how you do it. Thank you very much. Question number seven, when are application deadlines? Ms. Jenya? 
Uh, you can still, uh, till the end of June, you could still send your applications. Uh, all you have to do is to calculate the visa getting process, right? So you also, because you are going to be accepted till the 1st of uh, October. Of course, if you notify the universities that you are running a bit like two weeks late or something, they can still accept you. However, if you uh, arrive after the November, you're not going to be accepted for the first year. I see. So before the end of the June, I think application should be made. The end of the June, yeah. Yeah. What is the least annual fee to expect anywhere in the Ukraine? Uh, this question is not that much clear. I think it is for the medicine or the other courses. If it is for medicine, what is the least fee? It's 300, uh, $3,800. $3,800 per year. Yeah. Okay. Part-time job opportunities. Yeah, they. Uh, no one has touched this to topic actually. The, is there a part-time job opportunities for the students? I would like to ask these questions to Mustafa Ali. Um, I don't think so, because I, I I didn't yet, um, see any any job like people working unless maybe like you may I don't know you get a letter from the government maybe you open your own restaurant and you have to you, in order for you to do that you have to at least stay in the in the country for around six years and get. Uh, a permanent residence card and it's gonna take a lot of time but as a student mm -hmm. i don't think they, they're gonna give you so you don't have job. any friends who is making the part-time job yeah i actually do have one but mm -hmm. he, he owns a, a restaurant so it's, it's not like a part-time so it's his restaurant ah, other than okay. that uh, he is an I, investor then yeah he's an investor so anyway the part-time yes. job I don't, I, I don't think they're going to pay you that much, even if you get one. Maybe in other cities. I don't know about other cities, but in Vinitsa, we don't have a part-time job for foreigners. Miss Genia, is there a legal uh, permission for the international students to do a part-time job in Ukraine? Uh, not, not legal, no. <laughs> there is no legal permission. Uh, you could uh, get some couple of hours. All uh, I would suggest uh, the students to do is to get some freelance job because you could easily find some job on the internet, for example, some kind of typing things, you know, some kind of uh, getting with the presentations ready, some translations if you are good at languages. And there, is, there are numerous freelance uh, sites and you could e easily visit them. And uh, if you're good at something, you could find uh, something to do. They usually have strict deadlines, like approximately you, you have two days to complete uh, the article tr translation, or you have like one week to complete certain parts of things. And this is, could be actually one of the things that uh, the students might be interested in. The other job, like if you go to work in outside, um, without your computer, that would uh, usually be not that well paid and uh, physical, some kind of physical job. So I'm not sure whether, I, I, I would say that you have to concentrate on your studies and do some freelancing. I see. Okay. Can I add Thank something there, Mr. Your... Yes, you see, Mr. Hussein? Yes, um, part-time job, it's possible because I had some friends who are doing part-time, but it's uh, very efficient if you can speak Ukrainian language because there are some uh, uh, offices or like restaurant, they are very international and they prefer someone who can speak uh, English language during summertime. So in summertime, you can get a part-time job if you're fluent in Ukraine and uh, maybe the employer is some kind of a friend, you know him somehow or her somehow, then you can get a part-time job illegally though illegally yeah. remember <laughs> i see okay so it depends on the personal relations but yet it is not it's legal better yeah it's not legal and it will be easier if you know ukrainian language i see maybe uh, some of our uh audience you can they start your own company compare like with another... the, some other countries yes you can also okay. start your baba thing like shave other people's hair get money, you know, try your own thing. Yeah, okay then.
So I think for those who would like to study medicine in Ukraine, uh, since also the school fees, life expenditure is not that much, uh, we can suggest and advise them to concentrate on their studies and finish their studies on time and then become a doctors and then to make money <laughs> after finishing the university. <laughs> I would like to thank you all, Ms. Jenia, Mr. Dr. Hussain, uh, Mr. Mustafa, thank you for your participation. I think we have already covered the time which we have uh, think of. So thank you for your participation and uh, your uh, precious information which you have provided to our students. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much.